Renfield and Cocaine Bear were probably my two most anticipated movies this year, and hell, why wouldn't they be? I love cult movies, and both of these scream potential future cult classics. Sadly, in both cases, what we got was definitely entertaining and fun, but fatally flawed in weirdly similar ways. So let's take a look at why that was. Both of these movies have great A plots, but are plagued by boring and uninteresting B plots that actually feel like they take up the majority of the runtime. I'd say it is as much as 60%. I haven't actually gone back and timed that, but that's what it feels like. In Cocaine Bear's uh, case, I posted on social media straight after watching the movie. I never thought I was going to say this, but Cocaine Bear needed more Cocaine Bear. The bear is brilliant whenever it's on screen, but the problem for us is the fact that the majority of the runtime is devoted to a bunch of boring ass characters that we don't care about and a drug dealer subplot that probably actually takes up most of the actual plot and the cocaine bear just interjects itself into that plot every so often, boosting the entertainment value by factors of thousands. In these creature feature types of movies, you usually get a group of people who are the main characters in a secondary group. That secondary group gets uh, themselves killed off to establish the threat against the main group. Then one by one, that main group is slowly picked off before eventually the last people survive. Here though, we get about seven groups of characters that appear and disappear. And they usually disappear because they purely exist for the cocaine bear to kill them off. So they aren't even real characters. They basically show up and then die within the first five minutes of them showing up. Which would be fine, but this is made even worse by the fact that all of the main characters are quite clearly bulletproof. It's so obvious that none of these people are ever gonna die, so nothing ever has any stakes unless the bear is on screen. And admittedly, yeah, it's hugely entertaining watching it kill the faceless characters the plot throws its way. But it just doesn't happen anywhere near enough, and I didn't care about any of the characters near enough to really care. And I knew the ones that were the main characters weren't gonna die, because they're literal children, or little children's parents, and they are definitely not gonna be killed off in this kind of movie. Renfield similarly has a great A-plot, uh, involving Dracula and Renfield totally heterosexual codependent relationship but sadly for everyone involved the runtime is dominated by awful fina sorry i mean aquafina who is so awful here i could actually probably devote an entire video just to how much her performance annoyed me but suffice it to be to say she can act and has the emotional range of a potato hell you could even play a game where you are just shown images of Aquafina reacting to things in this movie, and you have to guess what she's reacting to. And I would imagine, other than by pure dumb luck, you would find it impossible, because she has one face. And this is made even worse by the fact that this film, bafflingly, keeps cutting to Aquafina for reaction shots, and this is the only face she's got. But all of that being said, even if they did cast someone who was remotely capable of acting, I don't think they would have been able to save that portion of the movie because it's a kind of weird police procedural and it doesn't really fit with the other A plot, which is that codependent relationship between Dracula and Renfield, which is great. And I just don't get why they put it in there it doesn't really mesh with the actual main driving force of the plot that they've got going on and you never really care about any of the people involved in that plot you just seemingly you know you just feel like you're treading water waiting for the two nicks to get back on screen so you can be entertained some the other reason these films are kind of similar but in a bad way, is the budget, uh, but for different reasons. Renfield's budget was too big at $65 million. I just don't see in what world they thought a horror comedy was going to make $150 million to just break even. Uh, it's utter madness. Cocaine Bear's budget, on the other hand, 
is appropriate for the box office, but way too small to give us enough of the actual cocaine bear, because CGI bears high on cocaine ain't cheap. And budget of $35 million was way too small to give us what we needed more of, which was the bear. So there are a lot of good things in this. Uh, as I say, both of the A plots in both of the films are really, really entertaining. There's just not enough of it. I wish that the A plots were on screen for like 60 to 70% of the time. And those B plots I don't really care about, you know, the ones that just pad out the runtime on screen for like maybe 40% most, 30% of the time, but it felt like really that they were the main focus and I was treading water until I got back to that 5 star A plot because they both do have 5 star A plots. The cocaine bear, whenever it is on screen, is entertaining as all hell, especially the one sequence where he's chasing an ambulance. One of the funniest scenes I have seen in a long time Nick Cage is just chewing all of the scenery in Renfield. Uh, Nick Holt is really great in this as well, across from Nick Cage. And I wish they, those two, were the main focus, rather than Aquafina, because she can't act. And the story that she was acting, acting in, was boring anyway so even if you'd have gotten a good actor to acting that i don't think it would have been very entertaining uh both of these are worth a watch but neither are probably going to be much remembered past this year if i'm going to be honest uh they're the kind of film that somebody's going to watch once they're probably never ever going to watch them again and in 12 months time i highly suspect a whole bunch of people are going to have forgotten that they even watched them